Hello, everyone. Welcome to another one of our Facebook Live sessions. Hello, hello. And you know Alex. You've been here before. <laughs> I think I've worn this exact thing, too, so. Yeah, but I didn't remember, right. so maybe no one else does either. <laughs> it, was, it was way back when you were out of town, and oh. we actually did a San Diego London oh, thing. Oh, that's right, that's right. So I am outfit repeating, but it's okay, because it still, still works. Well, you know what I did today? I'm wearing platform shoes, so that, and you're wearing flats, yep. so that we can look like we're part of the same family, <laughs> maybe. Because <laughs> I always feel so short. Um, but. And I don't look at you as short, though. Oh, I don't feel I like I'm short, but you're definitely taller than I am. <laughs> and so it's nice to be more um, level with you. Well, all right. So what's going on in Cleveland? What are you doing? <laughs> well, uh, I'm here. It's snowing in Cleveland also. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, it was 70 yesterday here, and it was 13 this morning. So it's a little hard to know how to dress. Yeah. You're in linen, and I'm in silk or viscose. Yeah. And, it really yeah. was 70 degrees yesterday. It really was. And now it's icy. Yeah. So. yeah. But you're from, you come in from Cleveland. Uh, you run the So Confident, you manage the So Confident uh, education program for us from Cleveland. But you come in every once in a while to do things. And we're working on a special thing, which we're not going to announce today. But It's quite fun, though. Yeah. We're working on a really special project for April. So that's why you came in. But you do a lot of things in Cleveland. And one of the things you do on Fridays is you volunteer for the Boys and Girls Club. I do. So tell us about that. What yes. do you do? So on Fridays, I teach fashion design to kids at the Boys and Girls Club. So Betsy's going to put a link in the chat. And you guys can donate. We're always looking for sponsors. We're looking for fabric donations. Uh, we make things. We actually make something out of your book next month, one of Linda's, how many books? I don't know, 10 or 11, 12, 10 or 13. or 14 or 40, <laughs> who knows. Um, Most but, of them are, are not published anymore, but yes. Yeah, so every Friday I go and uh, they kind of alternate. So I, I alternate between teaching them a sewing lesson, kind of a basic sewing lesson of some sort, if it's a bag or a small kind of garment project teaching them the basics of like sewing machines, working on a brother sewing machine that we've had sponsored. And then we alternate the next week, we have a special guest speaker come in. Um, we've had them over Zoom um, and we try to schedule speakers to come in that are in the creative industry and just kind of teach them about what it takes to maybe start a business, maybe put creative projects out there, maybe to start their own fashion line. Um, one of the people we collaborate with her name is Charlize Antoinette. Shout out Charlize if you're watching. Uh, she's a fashion designer out of New York City and she uh, has designed garments and designed kind of the looks for different movies um, and is a Grammy, is a not Grammy nominated, is Oscar nominated uh, fashion designer. Really? So she came in on Zoom a couple weeks ago and she's kind of helping me lead the program and bring in special guests also. So that happens on Fridays, and we're always looking, like I said, for, um, right. you know, if you're interested in even just giving to that program. Uh, again, it happens every Friday, and it's a great way to kind of immerse kids in the creative industries. You know, maybe they know how, they have some interest in being creative, or like there's a girl that she, she always drew sketches in her free time, but she was like, I don't know what to do with this, and now she's learning how to use a sewing machine, and she has a little sketchbook and a portfolio, so maybe someday she can take this to college and take this to a, a program and kind of show her work. So. Right. Well, I, I donated some fabric and some yeah. patterns and some notions. Yeah. And, you know, there probably are a few people out there today who might have a little bit of extra fabric. Yeah. Um, that, Always, right? Yeah, that they might uh, want to donate or even just a little bit of money or books or sounds like pencils and sketching materials and notebooks and some of that kind of yeah. stuff as well i don't know yeah so we we're, we're, uh, don't send us your entire fabric stash <laughs> but if you have certain things you like we look for a lot of cottons and just basic knits not a lot of novelty things at this point so it's kind of just basic okay. uh basic things maybe some canvas for bags or things like that but if you have some cottons and some knits that you're willing to part with um, we're kind of just starting out with the basic woven garments and some basic knit garments and okay. then uh, any notions and that kind of thing would be would be great too so uh, Betsy's going to put a link to donate in the chat and you can click on that link 
clevekids.org. The location is the Broadway Club, which is located in Cleveland. And uh, when you donate, you can specify, it'll ask you what program you want to donate to. You can say design you or fashion design. Cool. Yeah. I think it's great. You post some pictures every once in a while. It's really, really cute. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, these kids are really into it. Well, uh, this is still February, correct? I think so. Yeah, I think so. We're coming up on March, but we're... It's 2 uh, 22 Oh, yeah, that's right. So. That's right. Mm -hmm. So we are still in Hudson Pants Variation Mode for So Confident. And in addition to our plaid kits, we are offering a few... I see our hanger is not here. Um, we're offering some solids, and we have a solid color of linen for every, <laughs> here's our hanger, um, for every colorway that we're offering. So we have black linen, we have navy linen, olive linen, we have a rusty, bittersweet color, and we have a beautiful neutral. So all of these coordinate with the all of the kits for the sterling jacket, and then they'll coordinate again with the Crane Street tee, which is coming out next week. And if you're not a So Confident member, you can still buy these uh, as kits, and you can also go and purchase our Hudson Pant Variation class online True. right now. So you can, if you like what you see and you want a kit and you want to learn how to actually make the Hudson pants, which is, which is, would be fun if you want to learn about pants fitting and different ways, different techniques that Linda's. Right. In the class, we, we teach you how to add a side seam pocket. We have the bottom overlapping detail. That's kind of one of its signature elements. And um, I also teach you how to determine where the waistline is on a pattern where the top folds over and becomes a self waistband. I teach you where to cut that off and add a waistband, a separate waistband. Because it's, and people always ask, I forget to tell people why I do that. You know, not, not very many of us are level all the way around. We have tummies, or we have high hips, or we, our pants fit low in the front, or high in the back, or whatever. And sometimes, you know, when you cut the top of your pants, they might be really curvy and sloped and all that. And a turned over self waistband is not going to do that. And so a separate waistband is what can fit that shape. So that's why I like to do it. Plus, when you put a side seam pocket like we put, like the West End Pants pocket, that has an opening, uh, that kind of a pocket opening that comes up. And you don't, I don't like to take that into the waistband. I like to have it, I like to have a seam there. So anyway, that's, that's all of what you learn in the pants class this month. Um, we have a, I have a couple of little things I want to tell you about. Um, Betsy has produced, have you seen this? Yeah. Betsy has produced this three-page PDF document that has all of our patterns on it. And it tells you whether it's print and or digital. This is now on our website under About Us. Is that right? Mm -hmm. And you click on About Us and drop down and you can print this out if you want to, so you can tell. We have a lot of patterns, as it's turned out. I, I had no idea. Or, or you can save it digitally, if you're like me. Yes. I'm, I'm the print girl. You know, I want the hard copy of this. And yeah, these girls don't do that. I get that. So there's that. That's new. Um, you and I were at Barnes & Noble the other night. And I ran into this new magazine called Taco. I'm not sure. I, I know it sounds funny to say taco, but. Uh, I think it is, perhaps. But this is out of Finland. And it's, it's a pretty interesting magazine. It's about sewing and climate and culture and community and all about sustainability. It happens to be a brand of clothing. And so you can buy the clothes, or you can buy a magazine, and then you can buy the patterns. And 
you can download the pattern and make it, and they have the instructions in this magazine of how to make it. So I thought it was pretty interesting. I think it's geared a little bit more towards your generation than mine, but that doesn't mean I wouldn't make something out of this, because that's a, it's, it features sewer, sewers and people who are in the craft and sewing business, and it's all about the maker. So interesting magazine. Well, then, of course, you know, I read the Wall Street Journal on Saturdays, the off-duty section. And this was all about uh, nothing new. Most of us have enough stuff, and yet we crave novelty. But it's all about what's in our closet that we're not making and how do you refresh your wardrobe. So one of the things that caught my attention was the very last point, shop your own closet. So... Do you, do you go through your closet and really search out new combinations and new things, or do you operate from the first 12 inches of your closet? Well, let me tell you, when I'm in Kansas, I can, <laughs> I can shop in your closet. So today I didn't really have anything to wear, so I can look through all of Linda's clothes and ask her what I wear. But generally, when I'm home, um, you taught me to color coordinate my closet. So I kind of look based on color. I don't really look based on space. Yeah. Well, so. I find that I wear the same things. Sometimes I just, for some reason, every morning I, I'm either in a hurry or I, I don't have the oomph to select something that I haven't worn for a while. So I, I do operate kind of in the first 20% of my closet. And I have all these fabulous clothes. And so it is, I think, important to sort that every once in a while and bring some things forward. And, but it brought up the idea that I tend to wear simple, solid things to work. And I sort of was yearning for something colorful and fun. So Erin, last week, cut this out for me. And I sewed it over the weekend. And this is the San Diego tunic. And obviously, the San Diego is one of your favorites because you made one a long time ago. I did. Tell us about that. Yeah, I was trying to think. I think I did this. We, we taught a class in Puyallup called Mother Daughter Duo. We took the same pattern and we did it two different ways. One kind of geared toward a younger generation and one kind of geared toward older. Different, different fabrications. <laughs> and stuff. I'm not really sure how we marketed that class. I could not say that, but um, yeah, I just took the, we took the same pattern and did it different in different ways. So I remember looking at this pattern and wanting to blend knit and woven, um, which I did. So the, the back, is all in an Alabama chain and cream knit. And then this front is this really cool textured checked. Yeah, it's an embroidered cotton woven probably. Yeah. But I think this is a really cool thing to do to co combine the wovens and the knits. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah so. so that kind of start. Do you know the history of the San Diego pattern? Why don't you tell me? Well, I'm going to. Uh, <laughs> so the American Sewing Guild has national conventions every summer. And years ago, we did the national convention as a vendor and teacher uh, in San Diego. And we needed a new pattern. And they were doing, we were doing pattern testings back then. And so we took this pattern to San Diego, and 20 women sat in a room, and we tested the pattern, and we determined it was really cool. And so we made it into a pattern and named it the San Diego. But it was a jacket. That was the first pattern. So this is the jacket of the San Diego. Now this is a little shorter than the pattern, but this is in four-ply silk, which is of course the most beautiful fabric that was ever invented. And I even lined it. This is a fabric, when we go to Chateau du Mas, sometimes we'll dye some fabric, and this was some lining that we dyed. Uh, I've put this over a beautiful silk printed longer Eureka top. But this San Diego jacket has so many looks to it, from long, short, buttoned, uh, funnel neck, draped neck, coat, the whole thing. But its signature technique is it has a forward shoulder seam. that dies into this point and then turns to become the next seam. This particular style of seaming happens 
in two or three or four of our patterns. And it's something that is a really great thing to know how to do because it fits you so well. So it's in yours, it's in mine. But at any rate, we, we discontinued the San Diego for a while, the jacket. And then a couple years ago, we brought back the San Diego, the jacket, the, and added the tunic and a top. So I think we have photos of you in this top, also linen. So it can be, these are the three variations of the San Diego. And I forget exactly which technique, you might talk about this, but I remember trying to help people in, at Chateau du Mas with make, the construction of this garment. And there's something that I always get backwards. Yes, we're gonna show that, yeah. yes. Because so. it is a little counterintuitive, mm -hmm. that is true. So, um, but then we did one more thing with it. I don't know if you know this even. We turned it into a bomber jacket. So we really have four renditions of the San Diego. The pattern, which is both print and digital, has the jacket, the tunic, and the top, and the Charlie Bomber is a separate pattern, and it's digital only. But it has that same technique right here. So. Why did you rename it the Charlie Bomber instead of the San Diego Bomber? Well, that's a, um, we had the Charlie Bomber out for a while as a tutorial. And Aaron had made it up originally with some appliques. And, and then we redid that pattern, really. We, it was a how to change the San Diego into this bomber jacket. And there were a lot of steps to do it. And we thought that it was so, even though it had that element to it, it had other things that were very different from the San Diego. We felt like it needed another push and another name. So that's why we did it. But I don't know. We could call it Charlie from San Diego Jacket. I'm not sure. OK, so let's talk about this famous little corner. All right. So this is. The one front here. See how unusual this shape is? So you can see this is an arm's eye. And this is going to be a facing that will ultimately fold back and connect and become the collar. So this is the tricky part right here where you have this is the shoulder seam and this is the neck seam and there's a very important dot right here that seems to just float in nowhere but you have to mark that because when you chalk mark and stay stitch along the 5 8 inch line here and then here that dies into this point which is f more than 5 8 of an inch from this point but this is the point that has to be clipped so that this whole thing can turn, this part can turn and go around your neck. And without that being accurate and without being able to clip, that's the trick. Well, here's the part that's weird and probably the part you're talking about. So, I'm not sure I can show this on Facebook Live. Hmm. Yes, all right, so this, obviously this is the arm's eye, and so this is a left side. This is the right side that's ultimately going to be over here when all of this is turned and coming around. Does that make sort of sense? Not, that's probably where I got it backwards. Yes, you have to line up these shoulder seams and these points in order to make that. So you just have to trust the you have to trust the instructions, and this is critical. And accurate stay stitching and clipping to that point is critical. But that's essentially this is now going to this is the shoulder seam that will now line up with this. Right there. Why don't you hold that right there? That is the shoulder seam that's going to line up, and that ultimately will complete the sewing, but it won't do it because it's not clipped yet. There's a whole free 
tutorial about how to do this. Betsy did it. It's in our blog. If you go to our website, click on blog, click on San Diego, this will come up. So don't fret about not understanding every little thing. I'm just pointing out the important points that you need to watch for, but you can follow those instructions precisely from the blog. Well, and our instructions in the pattern as well. Okay. Well, let's talk about fabric. So we pulled together some really pretty, beautiful prints because I was in the mood for prints. And then because you were wearing linen, we put some coordinating linens that you could either use for San Diego's or for pants. I suppose we should say what we're ha wearing these with. Yeah. There's two different profiles. This is the profile that I think of as the most common. And these are the helix. Oh, the pants. Profile. The pants, yes. yes. Helix pants. Slim yes. pants with a little bit of an oversized, longer mm -hmm. piece. And they'll probably ask about your shoes. Probably will. And so then uh, I put these on today with my West End pants. And I think the reason you see this look a lot now, the fuller pants with a longer top, we're kind of back to that. We used to do that in the 80s. Were you born? Barely. 89. <laughs> Barely. Uh, but so for some of us, this has come around again. And uh, I didn't know if it would work or not. But these particular West End pants are made out of our rib knit. And that is a super drapey fabric. So I think that's the key. If these were made in linen, I don't think that would work for me. So the fact that these are drapey and really move around, I think it kind of works. My shoes are Fly London's. What are yours? Mm -hmm. uh, these are Billy Reed. Oh, Billy Reed. They don't make shoes anymore. That's really sad. Yeah. yeah. All right, so we pulled out some, some really beautiful prints and linens. So um, I love these cross-dyed linens. Yes, that's what you have on is the cross-dyed linen, where the woof and the weft are two different. The crosswise and the lengthwise threads are two different colors. And so the crosswise in this case is green, and the vertical is white, so it becomes a totally different color. But yeah, I, I love them too. So we start with this lavender on the bottom, which is the same fabric that you have on. Different color, obviously. And this is an Angaro fabric. We talked about Angaro last week, one of the groups of designer fabrics that we got from Angaro. Uh, it's, he's a Paris was a Paris designer. The house still exists in Paris. And, but the fabric is made in Italy. And this is a beautiful chalet, wool and silk. I think it kind of looks like Etro, but it's it, obviously not. It's Angaro. But look at that. Isn't that in incredible? And the drape yes, and the yes. hand on this. Yeah. It does not feel like wool, but it definitely has that classic chalet flavor to it. And chalet I think of as Paisley's, and wool chalet is the most classic of the chalets. How, what's the percentage of wool and, and uh, silk? 65% wool, 35% silk. Yeah, all right. So we put it with the lavender, we put it with the pale green, the celery green, but then we also put this with a beautiful viscose print. Now we've been talking about silk, but there are rayons, rayon crepes and lightweight rayons, chalets and so forth, that have the properties of silk. And so the techniques that you would use to sew silk apply to these sorts of fabrics. So we have a tutorial called Sewing with Silks that even though it says silks, all of the techniques that are in that tutorial, <coughs> excuse me, apply to these fabrics. So this is a rayon crepe in a beautiful tangerine color with hot pink and lavender and green. I think on the screen this came off a little bit hotter of an orange than it really is, but it's, it's a beautiful uh, tangerine color. This is the one that I am wearing, and Erin made a special uh, attempt and successfully to match these patterns, and so there's a concentration of this motif that kind of diagonally goes across this, and I think the placement is really perfect. 
I don't know how long that took you, but a while. A while. <laughs> yeah, you have to be patient with the matching of things. So then we have worth, worth it though. Oh, absolutely. So then we have another Angaro, same paisley. I don't know if it's the same same paisley, but it is a paisley Angaro wool and silk chalet in richer colors of reds, teals, camels, deep golden colors, and greens. It goes with a lot of these. It goes with the pale green. It goes with this lovely linen. I'd make great pants with this. And it goes with this blue as well, the cross-dyed. Now, I fell in love with this. You know, we talked last week about how many pr so many prints have such regular floral motifs, but this does not. This is a sprinkling of motifs, and I think that makes it more beautiful. So this is black. This is viscose crepe, um, also Italian, but peach colors, coral colors, royal blue, and then put it with some pale linen, blush linen. And we've got, we're getting ready for spring here a little bit. So, <laughs> all right, I think, oh, I want to show mo one more thing about Charlie Bomber before I forget. You know, I showed you the silk Charlie Bomber, but last Series 10 of So Confident, we did the Charlie Bomber in uh, a cotton sateen and denim. So look at the contrast between the two. You know, it's, they're very different, but it's the same pattern. So fabrication is everything. As I hope you can see from the two fabrics that we have on, Charlie Bombers. We still have Charlie Bomber kits that include the zipper and thread and denim and everything you need to complete that and instructions for uh, quilting. And there's a class. There's a class. So you can, can take the class on making that garment, mm -hmm. a tutorial, a full-on tutorial from how to quilt this. It's quilted over cotton knit, and then the denim is washed so that it will fray on purpose. So, all right. Do we have questions? I do. I'm going to have to repeat the questions. All right. So the um, short four-ply silk version, how much was it shortened? Um, I can't really tell you because I don't uh, have, uh, they want to know how, how much this particular jacket is shortened. Um, I'm going to say three or four inches. I don't have an original jacket here in the studio, but I'm going to say it's three or four inches. And we didn't put the buttons on it and the loops. Um, is the um, Charlie Bomber kit lined? And maybe the question is also, do you get Yes. Is it, the Charlie Bomber kit lined? Yes. It is lined. It's lined in cotton knit. So you get this fabric, the inner fabric, the outer fabric, the denim, the ribbing, thread. You get everything. And the zipper. This is a great just variation of a, a denim jacket, you know. I know, a, a jean jacket sort of thing, but mm -hmm. way. I tell you where, you know where this came from, don't you? We, Alex studied in London for a couple of years, uh, got her master's in uh, fashion entrepreneurship and innovation at the London College of Fashion. And I would go, I would go maybe once a year, I went a couple of times to visit you. And we would shop in this very special place. Joseph, was that the name of it? And there's a brand of clothing called Sakai. Mm -hmm. And you should look up that name. It's S-A-C-A-I, I believe. There so, might be two A's or two C's. I think that's right. You're right. I think it's two A's. S-A-A-C-A-I. Whatever. It's a fantastically innovative brand. And they use a lot of denim and they make a lot of jackets. And we saw this fringed affair and quilted and... Actually, the one we saw was really mixed up and mm -hmm. off the charts strange, but that's where we got the idea. Mm -hmm. But you should look it up that designer. It's really interesting. Um, for the Charlie Bomber class, do you learn the technique at the shoulder? At yes. The in the, yes. You, in the Charlie Bomber class, you learn the technique of the shoulder, sewing that shoulder and corner. 
That would be a great way to learn that too because it's a video tutorial. Right. So you get to really see Linda in real time walking through the steps of construction for it. So. Okay, so the... There is a question about whether the peach linen on the upper left is um, on the sale page, and Betsy is looking into that. So okay. We're checking in to make sure that this is on the sale page. We're not sure. But it will be. Betsy's making sure. What color pants fabric goes with what Linda is wearing? Well, I like this one. But, you know, I think... Oh, ooh. the blue. Look at this. I also like this. No, and what color is that exactly? Is this this is a, uh, we call this rose on the tag. Um, now, when I was fiddling around in my closet with what to wear with this, I actually had a pair of rusty pants that I considered wearing. I didn't think that was quite fresh enough, but it does work with it. I ended up with the green tone, but there are some beautiful blues in here. I think this is the kind of thing that you can dress down with some denim, put it with jeans, or some blue pants, um, this rose color. I mean, perhaps even this. I'm exactly. Sure. Right. We probably have a dead-on blue something that's a match. I don't know. I'm not much of a matcher, but uh, we can always come up with something. <laughs> so that print is sold in panels. Um, is it? That's what the customer had mentioned, that it was sold in panels, and she wanted to know how many panels you would need for a medium San Diego in the long version, so the tunic. Um, I just cut off the yardage. I didn't cut anything off in panels. Right. To be honest. I so. must. I don't think it's in panels. I think it may be in large repeats. Mm -hmm. But there's not a line. We need to look at Was there? No. 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 I just cut it off. Yeah. Yardage. So you cut off a couple of yards. Whatever the it, whatever the pattern time. says. Yeah. I didn't even adjust for yeah. print or anything. Yeah. Can, we, can you turn around and show the back of your shirt a little bit? Sure. Okay, do you sell four-ply silk? We, do we sell four-ply silk? We only have one color, and it's black. Uh, we do not carry a full range of colors of four-ply silk, partly because it has gotten really, really, really expensive. Um, but it is incredible. I would suggest if you're wanting a very special color of four-ply silk to check out Brightex Fabrics in San Francisco. They have every color. Um, can we um, let's see? Oh, the Paisleys. Could you use that for the jacket? Oh, yes. These Paisleys would make fantastic either Charlie Bomber jackets or San Diego jackets. Fantastic. Lined, unlined, either one. I, this particular... Charlie Bomber jacket. I did line in China silk. You don't have to, but I chose to. Once I get over just <laughs> admiring my work here, I'm going to start wearing this as my tennis warm-up jacket. I just haven't done it yet. <laughs> because I know I'm going to sweat in it. <laughs> uh, did you add length to your tunic? No, neither one of us, uh, length has not been added to either one of the tunics that we have on. Now, uh, Arthur and Samantha has made this as a dress and changed the angle a little bit at the bottom, but it was a fantastic dress. Okay, and then you had mentioned that the San Diego is a PDF pattern, but it's just a printed pattern. I'm oh, sorry about that. The San Diego, that's right, the jacket tunic and top is a print only and the Charlie, the Charlie yes. Bomber is digital right. yes right. sorry about that and if they have the original San Diego jacket how can I change this change it to this design or do I need to buy a new one well it's fairly involved to change it 
this whole front connection. Honestly, <laughs> I mean, you can do it, uh, but it only took us about six months. So, you know, maybe uh, 22 95 might be worth it. <laughs> and it's on sale this week, so just buy it. It's, 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 it's involved. Any plans to make the San Diego a download? Any plans to make the San Diego a download? We haven't talked about that. I wouldn't rule it out, but it's not on the uh, docket at the moment. From the magazine that you um, mentioned, um, is it in English or the pattern instructions in English? Yes, this magazine is in English. Why, I don't know, but it is. And it's, it was not inexpensive. It's printed in the UK, which has nothing to do with the language, of course, but it is in English. What pants pattern are you wearing, Linda? And what fabric is it? Uh, I'm wearing uh, the West End pants in a rib knit, our slinky rib knit. Mm-hmm. Yes. yes. Alex is wearing the Helix pants in Ponte Knit, our favorite fabric for that pant. Where can we find all of Samantha's dress versions? <laughs> Where can we find all of Samantha's dress versions? Do you know what Facebook Live it was? Oh, gosh. <laughs> Yeah, that's a, that's a Betsy question. She'll research that. Thank you very much, Betsy. <laughs> uh, we may have to get back to you on that and post it. But um, I, we do have somewhere, and Samantha probably still has it, a PDF of a lot of her dresses and inspiration that she had sent to me. That would be something interesting for our blog. We'll dig that out. Maybe when she's here, we can take a picture of it. Yes, she's coming. Samantha is coming to Kansas in uh, April. And I'm sure she'll have some dresses with her, and maybe we can take some good photos. Mm -hmm. um, so somebody did mention that the print you're wearing, Linda, isn't on the website right now. It could be because Betsy's fixing the panel. Oh. Changing it from panel price to okay. yardage. All right. So you might mention that. Uh, the print that I have on is not on the website right this second because Betsy's probably working on the uh, rewrite since it's not a panel print. This has been quite a year, a season of getting beautiful prints for us. Sometimes we have this <laughs> time frame where prints are terrible, but currently we're getting beautiful prints out of Italy. So take advantage of them. We're, I'm buying as many as I can get my hands on that I really like. Would you, um, the prints, would you do the Western pants? Or could you do the Western pants? Oh, for sure. The, uh, any of these prints, the weight of these could be West End pants, and they would be fabulous. And I love printed pants. I have several pair of West End pants in prints. Well, today when we were dressing for this, we tried on a lot of printed pants with my yeah. shirt. We couldn't really find anything, but 
This reminds me to still dress very happy, even in dreary winter days. Exactly. So, you know, yeah. don't be afraid of prints and patterns and bright colors. And yeah, I think it makes you feel better. It just, yeah. Is the black print, um, it says it's satin backed, is it draping? Um, very. Yeah, this is this is a, um, a viscose crepe. So the word the satin is a little bit. Um, it, it is a smooth, satiny back, but don't think of it as a satin back silk, which is usually crisp and heavy. It's not like that at all. This is super drapey. It's just as drapey as any other fabric that we have on the wall. Does the bomber jacket have a yoke, or is that a pattern adaptation? The the uh, Char the Charlie bomber uh, does not have a yoke. This is an adaptation and something you learn in that class of how to add a yoke. But the pattern is one piece. And um, so for the um, the tunic that you made, Alex, it has the two different fabrics. Um, how did you, how did you do that? Yeah, um, I always say I always have liked working with knit because that's sort of what I grew up working with. So I prefer to use knits rather than wovens because of, I think, just the, being able to kind of manipulate it and work with it. So even on this woven, I think especially just these seams or even the sleeve where you had to blend both fabrics, um, that, that kind of came in handy was with this knit fabric being able to, to kind of insert it, I guess, easily. So well, it, it eases easily. Mm -hmm. It molds easily. I think that's mm -hmm. what you're doing. Um, but but the, the, basically, the, the two fronts are the woven. And, the, you know, the, the fronts, as you could remember from what I demonstrated, the, that's all one pattern piece. So that's how that came about. And then the back and the sleeves are knit. It's as simple as that. Two pattern pieces in knit and two pattern pieces in woven. And they're the, I cut them the same. I didn't cut them any differently. Right. I cut them the same size and everything. So. You did, as I recall, oh, yeah. line the, the knit. And that was only because this ended up being a little clingy mm -hmm. in the back. And so you added a panel of Bemberg rayon just so it would fall and drape a little bit better. This was kind of an afterthought, as I recall. In fact, it's hand sewn in, I think. Yes. Because you made it kind of stuck to your clothes, and so you added the lining. Can you make the San Diego jacket raw edged, like a wool blend boucle? Can you make the San Diego jacket in a wool boucle raw edged? Absolutely, and we have one. I don't have one here in the studio, but we actually have one that's fringed and raw edged all over every edge. It's really fantastic. So yes, you can make anything raw edged, I think. <laughs> and then Alex, your helix pants, are they narrower than on the pattern? Are, the, are your helix pants narrower than on the pattern? They're not. Oh. These aren't as narrow as the pencil pants, though. So if you want a narrower pant, a thinner pant. Yeah, we think the, the pants. I haven't really put those legs up to one another for a while, but the pencil pants tend to be a little slimmer than the Helix. Yeah. Now, Aaron took the Helix pants and put the West End wide legs on them. Have you ever seen those? No. They're cool. Oh. So you can make the leg width any width you want on the Helix. How sheer is the handkerchief linen? How sheer is the handkerchief linen? Well, um, not super sheer. Let's see. Can you see any pattern through it? No. I don't think so. I wouldn't call this sheer. It's just a lightweight linen. This is, I've seen lighter weight handkerchief linens. This is not one of those. 
This is lightweight linen. Can't see through my yeah, shirt. Yeah, I don't so. think, yeah. Okay, so if you're going to use some of those prints as using it for the Western pants, would you need to align them or interface them? If you're going to use the prints for the West End pants, would you line them or interface them? And I would say no. Any of these would just work great as they are for pants. Good weight, nice drape. The two that have a, li a little bit of wool in them, there's nothing about this that's anything but soft. So just because it has wool, and I'm pretty sensitive to things like that, I wouldn't line these. You could. You could line them in chiffon or china silk or georgette, something like that, something very lightweight. What is the wrong side of that fabric? The wrong side of this fabric is a cream color. So the print is definitely coloring the entire background. Is that the one they want to know? They said just said the Angaro, so. The Angaro, yeah. Same thing here. It's the same cream background. Would the wool be warm or suitable for Arizona? You know, I think this is quite suitable for a warm climate. Um, you know, when you buy a really, really fine men's suit, that's going to be a tropical weight worsted wool. And men wear those pants and suits in every climate. And actually, I think a fabric like this can be better to wear than even like a polyester. Now, I don't live in that climate, and so, you know, maybe I don't have a realistic view of what that would be, but I, I would think it'd be all right. Feels much nicer than a polyester. Yeah. Just going through just to make sure I didn't miss anything. I guess you can go through the list of all the sales and everything. All right, so here's what's on sale this week. Patterns. We have the San Diego tunic top and jacket print. We have the San, uh, Charlie Bomber digital. We have all the fabrics that we've talked about. And we have Sewing with Silks tutorial. I believe that's it. There is one question. Um, are there, is there a particular pants pattern you would use for um, using the knit? Is there a particular pants pattern I would use with this knit, the rib knit? Uh, sorry, the linen. Oh, the linen. Um, I would use either the West End pants, Hudson pants, Chesney pants, uh, Hudson pants, did I say that? Valencia. Valencia pants. Madrid pants. Maybe Hollywood pants. Oh, I made them out of linen. Yeah, you did. The, you made them out of this. This is a little, little heavier. Mm -hmm. And yes, yours were exactly this fabric. And that, they were fantastic. I'm not seeing anything else. I just didn't want to miss All anything. All right. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you so much for yes, thank you. blessing us with thank your you. presence once again. Yeah. You're coming back in March, mm -hmm. so we'll see you again. Uh, but I also thank you for joining us today. And in the meantime, Linda and I are watching Inventing Anna on Netflix. Oh, so yeah. That's a really good show. Yes, it really lots is. Lots of interesting style. Oh, the no, she probably wouldn't wear any of this, but... I don't know. <laughs> you don't think? I, I was just thinking when you were talking. I don't, she doesn't wear a lot of prints. No, she, yeah, that's true. So, but her clothes are fantastic. Yeah. The clothes are fantastic. We need to, the, now we need to watch Mrs. Mizell. Because Mrs. Maisel. Maisel. Yeah. Mrs. Maisel, okay. Uh, because the clothes on, <laughs> the clothes on that one are mm -hmm. equally wonderful. And she wears prints. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. So thank you so much.
we will see you next week.